Do you need support automating your workflow? Let me show you JotForm's newest actions in Zapier. Hey JotFormers, welcome back. I'm Kimberly. And normally when we think about automating processes, Zapier is probably one of the first things that come to mind. And you're going to be happy to know that we are improving these workflows by adding some new zaps to our tool belt, namely the ability to assign regular and pre-filled forms. Now there are two ways that we can do this and I'm going to walk you through both. The first one is going to be creating the zap within the form builder and the second one is going to be on the Zapier website. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a form already pulled up. So I'm going to go up to the top. We're going to go to settings and then over on the left hand side integrations and then we are going to search for Zapier. Now from here, if you haven't already connected your account, there's going to be a button right here that you will need to click on and authenticate your account. But from here, we can pretty much choose how we want to use this. I think I'm going to go ahead and use the Google Contacts template. So anytime I add a new Google contact, I want it to send them this form. So I'm going to go ahead and click on use this app. Then I'm pretty much just going to follow the prompts to get it set up. We're going to choose get started. It looks like I already have my JotForm account selected. If you're at this step and you haven't authenticated, you definitely want to do that here. I'm going to go ahead and click next. Now we need to choose which form we want this to happen on. And yes, I'm going to go ahead and choose this one, the Zapier actions that we're on. We'll choose next. I'm going to choose the Google contacts account next. Now we want to choose which piece of the contact we want to fill the form with. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the first name, last name, and then the email and the phone number. And then the notes should automatically be checked and you do want to leave that checked. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose next. Perfect. See, if we uncheck the notes option, we can't go to the next page. So let's go back, let's choose the notes. Next, good to go. Now we're gonna send a test zap, good to go. All right, let's go ahead and click the next and then we are going to turn on the zap. Bada bing, we are good to go. So if we need to manage it, we can click on the manage the zap there. But I'm gonna go ahead and head over to the actual Zapier website and let's click on zaps. And we can see right here, this is the one that we just created. It is here and it is turned on and working. So I'm gonna go back over to the left-hand side. We're gonna choose create a zap. Now we're gonna create one from within Zapier. Now for this one, let's say that every time I get an email and I put a specific label on it, it will assign a form to someone. So this is really great if maybe you have an assistant who is doing things for you, this will automatically assign a form to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose Gmail for the first part. And then if it has a new label is the trigger event. Now we need to choose which Gmail account it's gonna work with, choose this one. We're gonna test that trigger. It's gonna look for emails that have labels. Perfect, good deal. We can also look for other labels as well, label A, B, and C. I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. Now, next up, we want to assign a jot form. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for jot form. You can see there are two jot form options. If you are on a regular standard jot form account, paid or free, you're going to choose that first jot form option. If you are an enterprise user, you would choose the enterprise. Now let's choose an action event. Now I want to assign a form. From here you can see that you can assign a pre-filled form and you can create a submission, which is really nice. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and click assign form. We'll continue. I'm gonna choose my jot form account. Continue. Now we're gonna choose a form that we would like to assign. I'm gonna go ahead and keep the same one. And now we can enter in an assignee email. Now if we click here, it's gonna give us options. So maybe there is an email within the email that we just labeled, or if we want it to go to a specific person, we can put this here. So let's say I wanna send this to my assistant. I'm just gonna go ahead and put my email in here. Perfect, if you would like to put a message here, you can, but then we can also change the permissions from here. So submit and edit later, submit only, or submit and view it later. I think submit and edit later is good. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there. We'll do continue. Perfect, everything looks good. Let's go ahead and test it. And there we go, we are good to go. Let's turn on the zap. Awesome, our zap is on. Let's go to the zaps. 
So now we can see that both of these apps that we just created for this video are on and are running. And it's as simple as that. If you have any questions about how to utilize these new functions within Zapier or any questions about Zapier, please let us know. And I'll see you next time.